vision. Hey everyone, Dave here, and right now I'm geeking out over Gravity Falls. Dave's obsession. Dave's obsession of the moment. Alex Hirsch's brilliant Disney Channel cartoon Gravity Falls is coming to an end after two magnificent seasons. Seasons that masterfully balance heart and humor, cuteness and grossness, wackiness and intricate plotting. And how appropriate is it that the series finale will be the day after the end of the world? The end of the world will be on February 14th in the year 2016. Valentine's Day. Bummer. This show has so many facets that drew in its massive fan base. The witty dialogue, the surreal gags, the developing story, the gripping mystery, the codes, clues, and background bits that show off just how hard Hirsch and his team work to make the show as good as it can possibly be. And as fantastic as all those things are, it's really hard to invest in a TV show unless you're invested in the characters. And Gravity Falls has quite a cast of characters. Everyone in this town is a tad strange. Except, ironically, tad strange. Hi guys, Tad's the name, and being normal's my game. The citizens of Gravity Falls are as cartoony and over the top as they come, but without losing sight of a relatable side. There's something to empathize with in even the smallest, most ridiculous side character. But where the characters truly shine is their relationships. Because no matter how cartoony a character may get on their own, the relationships between the characters remain completely genuine. The teenagers, for instance, are individually one-dimensional teenage cliches, but when they're together, they talk and act the way real teenagers do. Good job throwing the kid off the fence, genius. Your mom's a genius. Or at least how real teenagers talked and acted when I was a teenager. I can't keep up with you teens today and your emojis and your on fleek and your buzzfeeds telling you how much better my childhood was than yours. Candy and Grenda are ludicrous exaggerations of pre-adolescent awkwardness, but their relationship with Mabel is filled with all the good and bad of real childhood friendships. All the layers of support, betrayal, depth, shallowness, jealousy, compassion, conflict, and happiness that real childhood friendships have. Sheriff Loves and Deputy Durland are childlike simpletons at best, dangerously negligent idiots at worst, but their relationship is actually rather heartfelt, even though it's mostly played for laughs. Dang it, I almost got the treasure! The time we spend together is treasure enough. Dipper's crush on Wendy drives a lot of episodes, particularly in season one, and it's not a Tex Avery cartoon hearts over your head, wolf whistle slobbering love fest. It comes to light in an almost painfully real moment of realization that there's a feeling there he can't control. I just think Wendy's cool, okay? It's not like I lay awake at night thinking about her. Uh-oh. And the culmination of that crush is neither a joyous occasion nor a terrible hero-breaking tragedy. It's real, with all the complexity that real comes with. It's a relief and a disappointment all at once. Mabel, how can everything be so amazing and so terrible all at the same time? But the core relationship in the entire series is between Dipper and Mabel, the Pines twins. Heh, <laughs> Twin Pines. I am the master at finding Back to the Future references in Disney cartoons that may or may not be deliberate. Individually, they are both entertaining and relatable characters, but still heightened, to say the least, particularly as either one of them is overcome by an obsession. Because, you know, I can't possibly relate to a character obsessing over something. But together, they are far and away the most realistic depiction of siblings I have ever seen on television. Alex Hirsch based Dipper and Mabel on himself and his own twin sister, and he is committed to maintaining the integrity of their relationship. Not by categorizing each of them into narrow stereotypes where they always act the same way, but rather by keeping a check on the patterns in their behavior together. If you're close with your siblings, I don't need to tell you how you simultaneously love them more than anything and find them annoying as hell. Well, you're not not annoying. Yeah, you pretty much suck. And Dipper and Mabel certainly get on each other's nerves from time to time, but they also know that they need each other, and they can depend on each other. In the midst of all the wackiness and surrealism on this show, the most true-to-life thing that the audience can relate to are these relationships. Just like how in the midst of all the danger and adventure that Dipper and Mabel face every day, they know the most reliable thing that they can count on is their relationship. This journal told me there was no one in Gravity Falls I could trust. But when you battle a hundred gnomes side by side with someone, you realize that they've probably always got your back. And here's where we are about to get into heavy spoiler territory, so if you're not all caught up on season two of Gravity Falls, just stop watching the video now. 
here's the end card. Until next time, yada yada yada. Alright, they should be gone by now. Time to talk about just how important Dipper and Mabel's relationship is. Dipper and Mabel's relationship drives the show, and it stands in stark contrast to the Pines twins' relationship that started it all. Stanley and Stanford. The two stands started out as close as Dipper and Mabel, but it became clear that they had different goals and different capabilities, and as they were pulled in different directions, they started to drift apart. And Stanley's frustration at this development caused him to push back until he pushed too hard which caused Stanford to push right back at Stanley. But what the Stans didn't realize is that they were at their best when they were on the same team, when they were supportive of each other. And what made things disastrous wasn't the realization that they had different goals, but their refusal or perhaps inability to help each other with their goals. And sure, there were definitely specific instances where the blame is definitely placed on one Stan, and other instances where it's placed on the other, but... It all boils down to the disillusion of their camaraderie and teamwork. And Mabel's smart enough to recognize the danger in the relationship falling apart. But Ford still thinks it was the sibling relationship in the first place that was holding him back, not the disillusion of it. And he places significantly less stock in Dipper and Mabel's bond than he should. We've never really been apart before. And isn't it suffocating? For as much as he can be a good influence on Dipper in a lot of ways, he can also be a very, very dangerous influence on him. And not just because he deals with supernatural horrors. Ford thinks you can't trust anybody. Dipper has already learned that he can trust Mabel. But it's when Dipper decides to choose Ford's lifestyle over his reliable bond with his sister that the relationship is in danger of falling apart, and as a result, things start to go bad for the whole town. And at first glance, it might be easy to place the blame on Mabel for this, but the real problem is in the lack of communication between Dipper and Mabel. The show has proven time and time again that while Dipper and Mabel do have their individual victories, they're at their strongest when they're together. And despite the tension that was rising between them, when things get really bad, Dipper's smart enough to know that he needs Mabel. You've beaten Bill twice before. Why is this time any different? Because then I had Mabel. And it's their commitment to working together that's going to give them the strength to face whatever the future brings, whether it's adolescence or interdimensional demons. And the end result is... Something we'll just have to wait and see for ourselves. I can't even begin to describe how much I'm going to miss Gravity Falls when it's over, but it is incredibly exciting to watch it wrap up, to see this story come to a climax, and to see all these characters get their big moments. And I'm going to be right there watching the night after the world ends. Till next time, this is Dave, signing off.